talk because most of the time the questions are answered. I'm going to talk. I'll be more than happy to answer whatever questions you might have afterwards. That was again. My name is Quentin. I've been we're here for maybe a little about two and a half years now. And as a park ranger here at the National Mall, they switch us to different memorials. So one day I might be stationed here. Another day I might be stationed at the Washington Monument or Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson Memorial, they switch us all around. But regardless of what memorial I'm located, the first thing I like to do is bring this to people's attention. Now from where we are, we're about a mile and a half east, you're gonna reach the US Capitol. And that's the east end of what we call the National Mall. If you travel a little less than half a mile west, you're gonna reach the Lincoln Memorial. And that's the west end of what we call National Mall. Lincoln Memorial, US Capitol, that two mile stretch is the National Mall. And so the reason why I bring attention to that is because every single day, every day, when I have the young ladies come, you know, with their hair done, their heels on, their pocketbooks out, they say, oh, Mr. Ranger, where's this mall that everyone seems to be talking about? And then I have to break the bad news to them. I'm sorry, ladies, it's actually the mall right here. Again, the U.S. Capitol, Lincoln Memorial, that two-mile stretch is what we call the National Mall. But you all don't like people that ask questions like that, right? I didn't think so. Now, back to this memorial here. Now, obviously, this is the newest memorial associated with the National Mall. It was supposed to have been dedicated August 28th anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech. But a couple of things happened that last week in August. Of course, we had the, the earthquake, unprecedented earthquake in the East Coast. But the main thing that postponed the dedication was Hurricane Irene. Postponed it from August 28th to October 16th, 2011. And that's when this memorial was officially dedicated. But what came along with the dedication was controversy. A lot of controversial matters that surround this memorial. Now, hopefully not, but if I am so be it, I'll be the first one to tell you that this is not the first memorial or the only memorial that's been met with controversy. Not whatsoever. It starts back 160 years ago with that big tall building we call the Washington Monument. Now, it's hard to see it from here, but there is an obvious color change in that building. It sat there about a third away, incomplete, for about 20 something years simply because they ran out of money. If you've been to the FDR memorial, there's this huge statue of FDR sitting in the chair, but the National Organization of Those Disabled didn't like the statue. Now, why is that? Because he's sitting in the chair. Obviously, he's the only president to have served in a wheelchair, so they want to see him portrayed in that manner in a wheelchair. Four years later, they have a sculpture of him in a wheelchair. Now, if we talk about the, the Vietnam there's memorial, we'll be here all day. This controversy still lingers around about that. People were originally upset because they said the black walls underneath represents uh, shame, embarrassment, or defeat. People were upset because there was not originally a statue associated with it. But two years later, they had the three servicemen statue. But anywho, I bring up all those examples again just to say this is not the only memorial that's been met with controversy. But since those controversies are so prevalent, that's essentially what this talks about. The four major controversial matters that I always hear, and you've probably heard yourself. So if you had any concerns of any of these four that we're going to touch on, it's my goal that by the end of this talk, maybe your concerns have been alleviated. That's the plan. We'll see. Just tell me at the end. Now we're going to start with the first one. Now, picture yourself outside the memorial. You're walking through. Now, normally what you would have are man-made fountains or waterfalls. Right here above this little gold vent, normally we have falls running from here during this time of season, they have them cut off. You have one to your right, and you're gonna have one to your left. Now you walk through, you hear the fountains, that causes you to turn around, and then voila. You have about eight to 10 quotes, all from Dr. King to your right, and eight to 10 quotes, all from Dr. King to your left. And so that leads to our first controversial matter that I always hear. Mr. Ranger, these are some beautiful quotes. I really love these things that Dr. King has said, but one small problem. I don't see one quote from the I Have a Dream speech. And they say, why is that? Because it's the most recognized speech he's ever given, right? Well, in that case, they almost made the argument for me. It's the most recognized speech that he's ever given. You know, those five years on up are able to correlate the I Have a Dream speech with Dr. King. But when you, when you see that first quote there, it says Alabama 1963, that's an excerpt from a letter that he wrote while he was in jail. Birmingham, Alabama. Letter from Birmingham. If you look at the second one, it says Norway, Birmingham jail. Norway. That's an uh, excerpt from the acceptance speech that he wrote while he was in Norway when he received the Nobel Peace Prize. Skip all the way to the fourth one, there is a location, or there isn't a location, 
but there is a date because that's an excerpt from a book they wrote, Strength of Love. So not many people are familiar with the book that he wrote. So they wanted people, of course, keep in mind that I have a dream speech. I mean, it's the most, probably one of the most recognized speeches in the entire world. But also keep in mind that he wrote and said a plethora of other things also. I mean, we'll be here all day talking about all these different quotes. The third one is California. That was an anti-war ceremony that he gave to the uh, National Institute. So they put these other quotes up here, again, to have people keep in mind other things they said and other things that he wrote. Now, of course, with that being said, you're not going to have a Martin Luther King memorial or Martin Luther King anything without any kind of reference to the I Have a Dream speech, right? So there is one written reference, and that's what you see right there behind you on the side of the statue. Out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. Again, keep that context in mind. Out of the mountain of despair, the stone of hope. Now, keeping that in mind, what do you these what do you think these two rocks behind me represent? If you say the mountain of despair, I'll say you'll be absolutely correct. This is the mountain of despair. Now, obviously, when you look at this mountain, this is a huge piece missing, right? Now, where's the missing piece? It's right there behind you, the stone of hope. Out of the mountain of despair comes the stone of hope. So for those that have concerns about the fact that you don't see a necessary quote from there on the wall, they kind of did a, a better job when it comes to I Have a Dream speech because the entire memorial embodies a concept taken from that speech. So again, instead of having a direct line from it, the entire memorial is based off that speech. Again, out of the mountain of despair comes the stone of hope. Now, for where we are now, we're looking at the back of the statue. You all want to take a look at it from the front? Well, the idea is to say yes so I can show you what it is, right? All right, let's do that. A couple of things I need to point out for you all.